Property prices are booming, but is the market cooling down? What's planned that holiday let owners should be very nervous about? And can you trust what you see on TikTok? Answers to all of that and a lot more coming up in this month's market update. Let's start with house prices, which are rising at their fastest rate since 2004, according to data from the Halifax. That puts the annualized rate of property price growth at 13% which is pretty mad, isn't it? Does that mean that a slowdown is coming? Well, maybe, keep watching. We'll explore that in just a minute. First though, an interesting piece of research from Savills, which shows that the race for space is over. Yes, cities are growing faster than more rural areas for the first time since the pandemic began. Linked to this, the rate of price growth in houses and flats is now the same, whereas for the last two years, houses have been performing better as everyone suddenly wants to get out of the city, have more space, have a garden and so on. That pattern seems to be reversing now. We've been talking for a long time on the Property Podcast about how cities are going to be coming back and the death of the city has been very much oversold and this data seems to be backing that up. So I said that property prices are booming, up 13%, higher than they have been for years. Is the slowdown coming? Well, maybe it's not far away because of this piece of research from Property Mark, which regulates estate agents. They've surveyed their members and found that the number of viewings is down 29% in June compared to the previous month. Now, that doesn't mean that the market has gone freezing cold. It's just previously the market was running so hot, it was a bit manic that now the level that it's decreased to is pretty much normal for this time of year. So all that's happened is maybe some of the peak mania and excitement has come off a little bit. But this is a leading indicator, of course. The number of viewings translates into offers, mortgages, transactions, and everything else. So is this a sign that the slowdown is here? Well, we've been gathering some more data around this as well, and we'll be putting together a video very soon about that. So do make sure you're subscribed. Let's move on to the rental market now. And there's some data from the for national statistics that's found that the average UK rent has increased by 3% over the last year. Now that is a survey of all rental properties regardless of whether they're newly let or they've been let out for a long time. So given that most landlords will look at the rent only once a year often won't increase it at all if it's a good tenant it's not a surprise that's relatively low at 3%. However, there's also data from Rightmove reported in The Guardian, which suggests that this number is going to be increasing. They've looked at asking rents, so properties that are being marketed to rent right now, and they found that outside of London, the average increase on a year ago is 11.8%, which is a big increase. Now this suggests that as tenancies are coming to an end and properties are being remarketed, or as new supply is coming onto the market, landlords are looking at what they can achieve and realizing that it could be significantly higher and those rents are going up. So we can expect to see the average rental increase of 3% that I mentioned earlier being pulled up by that in the future. Across the country, the biggest increase has been in Manchester, where average asking rents have increased by over 23%, which is just crazy. Now, it's possible that that's being skewed by lots of new swanky properties coming onto the market and therefore pulling that average upwards. So it might not be the case that rents in Manchester are absolutely booming to quite that degree. But we do know from what we see that the market in Manchester is particularly strong. So not a big surprise to see that topping the table. Also not a surprise to see rents rising fast in London, where they're up by 14.3% according to that same right move data. And according to Chesterton's, inquiries from tenants are up by 171% compared to 2019. Now, that is a huge jump. And remember, that's 2019, pre-pandemic. If you'd said that it was that much higher compared to during, in the midst of the pandemic, when no one wanted to be in London anymore, then I wouldn't be surprised at all. But it's so much higher, not just as it was then, but higher than it was before the pandemic. Pandemic. So London's rental market is really booming and as there's a shortage of stock as well, tenants are staying put. Chesterton's also reports that they're seeing far more tenants renewing than usual, presumably because they're struggling to find anything else or they wouldn't be able to find anything else at the same price. So good news there for London landlords. Let's move on to mortgages now and the news that the Bank of England has scrapped a stress test that has meant that lenders need to check that borrowers can cope with some significant interest rate rises. So what that means is it stopped some homeowners from getting mortgages because they wanted to check not just that they could afford the mortgage today, but could also afford it if interest rates increase by up to 3%. 
Now, there are still other stress tests in place, and it doesn't seem like the removal of this particular one is gonna move the market particularly, but the timing is still quite weird. This was brought in in the aftermath of 2008 to try to make sure that there wasn't a repeat of that, and you didn't have people defaulting if mortgage rates increased. However, that's been in place for all these years when interest rates have been next to nothing. And as soon as they start to climb again, it's been taken away. So this particular change isn't expected to make a big difference in its own right, but maybe there'll be more changes to come. We'll wait and see. If you invest in holiday lets, you are now a target. There's a lot of political pressure for the amount of holiday lets to be reduced or for at least for some of the incentives to invest in them to be removed because they're causing issues in some parts of the country where there's lots of stock being taken out of the long-term rental market and being put in holiday lets instead. Wales is leading the way on this and they've recently announced quite a few changes around holiday lets. So they're going to be licensing holiday lets across the country, so every holiday let operator will need a license, but they're also making some changes to the planning system, which is going to differentiate between holiday lets, second homes and properties for long-term rental. That's going to give them the ability to require planning permission for changing between those types of property, which will allow them to restrict numbers also will allow them to treat them differently for tax purposes. So they could put some disincentives in place for holiday lets or second homes if they believe that they're causing issues. Now that is just in Wales at the moment, but similar issues exist in parts of England as well. And we often see that legislation that starts in Wales or Scotland comes to England later in a very similar form. So definitely one worth keeping an eye on. If you've had a property transaction fall through in the past, or maybe it hasn't fallen through, but it's just taken a really long time and been pretty painful, you're not alone. In fact, new research reported in Mortgage Strategy has found that a third of purchases fall through. And of the ones that make it, the average time to complete is over five months. It is crazy that something as important as transacting in homes and finding a place to live is as broken as it currently is. But like I said, it's been bad for a long time. I don't see any political pressure to do anything about it. So it's probably not gonna get any better. So just something to be aware of and plan for. And if you have been in a situation where you've had one of these really frustrating situations where it's been dragged out and then fallen through, well, at least you know you're not alone. There's also some good news reported in Landlord Today that apparently there are no rogue landlords or at least not many of them have made it into the government's database of rogue landlords. Since it was introduced in 2018, just 56 names have appeared on that register. And while in fact the number of criminal landlords is pretty low, they're very visible, they get a lot of press, it's very serious when something does happen, but it's not as much of an issue as it's commonly made out to be. I think it's probably more than 56. And I think what this is showing is how difficult enforcement is. There's a lot wrong with the experience of renting property, but the answer always seems to be more legislation. This just goes to show that the legislation that we have already isn't being enforced. So I'm not sure what the point of more of it is. And in fact, the Freedom of Information request that revealed this has found that only 23 local authorities have submitted anything at all. So not particularly encouraging. And finally, make sure you're sitting down for this one because you're in for a shock. It turns out that not all property advice given via TikTok is accurate. I know, but apparently an analysis of over 600 videos found that one in four was misleading. I actually thought it'd be higher. And 99%, surprisingly, didn't have appropriate risk warnings. But to be fair, I would have thought more than a quarter of what you see in the mainstream press about property is also inaccurate and it's less entertaining. So I'm not sure that TikTok is actually an outlier there. So that's it for this month's market update. Thank you for watching. And if you found this useful, make sure you watch this video next, where we talk about some changes that are coming down the track for landlords that you need to know about.